Okay. So can you please upload your channel afterwards? Wow, hey, that's really quick. How can people be on so fast? Can you guys hear me all right? There's a lot of bird action in this tree behind me for some reason, all of a sudden. <laughs> Here we go. How are guys on so quick? That's crazy. You guys get notifications straight away. Oh, message. That. Hello, Reese. How you going, man? Thanks for the uh, first chat. Yeah, so you guys can hear me, obviously. I'll talk a little louder. There's like crazy parrot action up in this tree. <laughs> I think they're blue, the uh, bottle brushes are blooming, so it's, uh... Hey Sam, Trill, Vash, Aggie, 97 if I'm saying that. Jeremy, how you going, man? I was trying to call you back yesterday. <laughs> Alright, we'll just wait until a few more people jump on, because, uh... There's no point in doing live stream with just... Well, maybe there is, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, it should be an interesting one. Um, hey Jordan, how you going, man? Uh... So this reel has been with me for almost, uh, what's that, I'm from Alabama, it is dark here. It is not dark here, it's maybe lunchtime here. It must be like, uh, my, what, eight o'clock, nine o'clock for you? Birds trying to get in on the action, man, they are everywhere. I got this magpie that's just hanging out here as well, he's uh, like a local, he just comes into our house and every, anytime he wants. Interested to see inside, yeah, so that's gonna be the big thing. Okay, we're getting a couple of people now, so. This is uh, the reel that's been sort of with me. This was the first slammer I got, uh, given to me maybe almost three years ago, and it's been on maybe two full summer seasons, and it's uh, seen quite a few snapper as well. Mackerel, cobia, what else has it caught? Tuna, nice big tuna, big long tail. So it's definitely seen some action, but I've been like talking about doing a reel, like a pull down or a, a reel, a proper reel service video, but I've just been struggling to find time. So I figured maybe I'll just open this one live and we'll just see what it looks like inside and it'll be uh, an interesting experiment. Hopefully it looks good inside. <laughs> but um, yeah, how many we got? 74, nice. Hello, hey Trevor. Oh, you're saying hello to Michelle. Hi Michelle. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? So I just pulled out a few tools from the garage. What do we got? Take a look around. But I don't think I'll really, I'm not going to pull the whole reel apart like and do a proper service now. I'm literally just going to pull out and just go open the main body. Hey guys, got a few snapper. Hey Rod, Adamski, my fish. Yeah, right. Been looking forward to this. I brought two slammers after watching your vids. Yeah, right. Hopefully they're working out for you. Are they with <laughs> What size is that reel? This is a 5,500. I'm not sure if I can spin it around. Oh, it sort of flips it. For some reason, the camera flips everything. Hey, you Rod, how you been, brother? Yeah, good, good. Not a lot of fishing. I guess while we wait for just a few more people to jump on, what have I been doing? You know what's been the biggest thing, actually? Like, I, I, uh, like about a week and a half ago, I damaged my finger. I'm not sure if this will... So, um, a bit of an accident. My finger got reefed back so far that it snapped all the tendons in the top of this one. So it actually doesn't work anymore. So. This, uh, so I haven't been obviously on the kayak, plus the weather's been pretty crappy, so this is the most interesting thing that's happened to me recently. I don't know if you can see that big lump there, but that's the tendon that's running down there. And if I squeeze my hand together, see how that top of my finger doesn't fold anymore? So uh, that's no good. Yeah, I've got nine more though, so it's, uh, we're looking pretty good. <laughs> what is that? you got to watch those fingers. Yeah, I know, man. It sucks. Like, watch, watch. So when I, it's, it's really bizarre, because when I bend my fingers, I can crunch them all up, but this one, it doesn't bend at all anymore. So, um, yeah, so that sort of stopped me from paddling for, for a week and a bit. And then, uh, isn't that the same finger you hooked? No, that was this finger. So, other side. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and, uh, so that's been the most interesting thing that's been going on recently. Busted up fingers. I've been getting, like, scans and things on it, but it doesn't look like it's going to come back unless I get an operation. The operation will be two operations. One to stretch the tendon back out, and then the next one would be to attach it again. So, and it's like a four to six month recovery. So, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I think I'm just gonna be like, like that for the rest of my life now. So I can't really grasp. But if I take these two together like that, I reckon, cause if I hold them, I can bend it, not, not too bad. Hey, smaller man, how you going, man? <laughs> Always can rely on you to jump on, brother. Uh, all right, yeah, so, 
I don't know, so that's sort of stopped me from fishing a bit. Plus the weather's been pretty crappy, so not a lot of kayak fishing. But I think it'll be a um, a little bit of a time before I can paddle the kayak. So unfortunately for the kayak fans, it's going to be a little bit more uh, skiff, I think, for a while. She had a Newfoundland, 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 sorry if I'm saying that wrong, from in Canada. How you going, man? Bit windy today. Yeah, oh, so windy. I don't know if you can see, well, you can't see here, but it's blowing a gale now. The last two days, I went out to the Tweed break wall after I dropped the kids off this morning, and it's, it's terrible. There's no way I was going out. Anyway, I guess you guys came to um, still enjoying the skiff. Yeah, skiff's awesome. Skiff and kayak's awesome. What's going on here? It's like my screen keeps dipping, going dark. If I touch that, what happens? Nothing, okay. Largest fish on the slammer? Probably a mackerel, probably a Spanish last year, or last season. Probably about maybe metre 20 so far on this one. I haven't got much, I haven't got a monster on it yet, but you know, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's windy up here where I am. So I guess I should take this reel off and uh, we'll get into some uh, pull down, real, real pull down. So. All right, yes, probably should have cut this leader off. I didn't want to cut it off because I did an FG on it and I'm, oh, hang on, it's tangled. FGs take me too long, I don't want to pull it off and redo it. <laughs> First, the hook, now the tendon. Yeah, the tendon's pretty pretty crappy, but um, it's not much I can do. Have you spooled yet? Have I spooled it yet? Oh, I won't be spooling it. Sorry, I might misunderstand that question. What's going on here? The leader's caught underneath the reel now. Great. Anyway. Ew! Hey Bryce. What's going on here? Well, this is maybe a good opportunity to take the top off because now that this uh, leader's somehow got caught underneath while well, it must have been whining. Hey from Brizzy, how you going man? Michael. Sorry I miss you but interested in reel maintenance. Yeah, well I'll do a proper video at some point which will be, uh, hey Tony, how you going man? I think um, I'll do a proper video. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So that's the spool. I probably should undo the drag on top as well. What's going on with my... Something wrong with my camera. Can you guys see that alright? Or is it dimmed? Is it really dark? Nice you got flathead when you were with Timmy. Yeah, I know. That was the flathead that saved our lives, mate. <laughs> we were pretty hungry by that point. Hadn't caught much else either. Anyway, here we go. So, yeah, can you go, it looks all right, does it? Because on my screen, it's dimmed right down and I'm too afraid to touch it and it'll, because it's gonna ruin it. Looks good, man. Didn't you know you streamed? Yeah, I'm only, this is only my third live stream. I'm still trying to find my feet with it. I'm not sure if I'm doing that great a job, but we'll get there. I got a cool little uh, widescreen lens. Oh, it's not on at the moment, but for the kayak. So I sh I'm gonna just, like try and start working in live streams on the kayak quite regularly. Anyway, we'll undo that. That should pull off now. So, that actually looks really good inside. So the chat's getting in the way here. How can I, can I focus on that if I pull back? So there's pretty much no salt. This reel has copped such a beating. Like I literally would have wound it underwater numerous times. I've dropped it. I've been mucking around with mackerel on one side and I've looked over and it seemed like my reel was just floating along on the side. So um, how much do they cost? In Australia, they're about 300. About 300, so not ridiculous price. Pretty, like it's a pretty good like option like I because I used to use the spin fishes and they were pretty cheap they're like 150 160 170 around that price but now I yeah I use my phone to stream yes um, it's an iPhone 7 uh, and then I switched to the slammers obviously moved up to the slammers and these things yeah like uh, I think for the price like and that's the thing like you can get sealed reels but for a proper sealed reel it's so exy you know what I mean like whereas the slammer comes in it as, as a proper sealed reel pretty much and it's looking real sealed on top. That looks great. Like it doesn't look like anything, any sort of uh, salt or water's been in the uh, drag. Bottom's looking a little bit more like a, uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see in there. It's looking a little bit more uh, sketchy, but that's far from a problem. I'll just spray that with inox. The clicker looks uh, like it's copped the most abuse. Inside out, everywhere else looks all right. It's just a bit of uh, salt sitting on it. So with a good uh, spray of inox, I could clean it up quite well. I guess we should, at some point, I'll think about pulling the drag apart. I didn't really plan on doing that. What I was really going to do today was simply just pull the, the main body off and see what that looks like inside. 
here we go and maybe answer some questions because uh it's life feeds bizarre man like you, you can do one thing but what you're really sort of here to do is answer questions and talk to you guys so it's sort of cool <laughs> Uh, new SSV will be worth a look. Yeah, I think it will be. Like, I think, um, uh, I think that's a price point difference then, really, because, like, I think the new, like, spin fish is going to be good, but it's that lower price point. It's sealed, but it's not as sealed as the slammers. So I can't see, like, I think if I was looking for a, a reel that it was more in my price range, I'd definitely look at the spin fisher Vs or, or the, the new uh, sixes, uh, just simply because it was more affordable. But if I'm going to be taking this thing out in the kayak, a reel, and I'm really going to put it through the abuse of this, this one's copped, I think I'd probably still go with the slammer, just simply because it's got a better seal. Do I like doing collaborations with Tim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he's, he's, I don't like him at all. <laughs> Tim's a cool dude, man. And like, what I, I approached him once to do that collab ages ago, and now since then we've become sort of good mates. So, um, yeah, like, you know, like we, we'll just hang out and when we fish, we fish together sometimes, we don't other times, you know what I mean? But yeah, we sort of become friends. So I don't look at those trips now less as collaborations and more just as just hanging out with a mate and going fishing. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he's all right. <laughs> okay, so we'll take this off. Looks pretty good. And we'll slide the handle out. I know I was definitely, the only thing that I've ever done to this reel, oh yeah, sorry, it doesn't pull out with that side, it's got to unwind, sorry. <laughs> you can tell I'm an expert. Tim's flatty was huge. That yeah, that big flatty was huge. Uh, all right, so that looks pretty good. I, the only thing I've done to this reel, literally the only thing I've done, is spray inox on that join there. That's the only thing I've ever done because I kept seeing the corrosion come in. And if I'd ever wind it down to pack it up to put it in a bag, I'd uh, fold it up and I'd see all this corrosion. Not so much corrosion, just the salt build up. And I'd just spray that with inox and fold it down. Apart from that, I've not done one thing to this reel. Not one thing apart from use it. So, I guess, what is it? Three screws. So I'll do these three screws. And then we'll pull it apart and see what it's like inside. This will be interesting. Oh, okay, I can use a flathead. Flathead screwdriver first. Loosen them up. Maybe I might, uh, I might sit down here on the ground and maybe if I move down. Morning Tide, Colab. Well, they got to invite me first, mate. <laughs> nah, but they're, they all seem like nice guys. I do speak to them every now and then, so I'm sure maybe at some point that might happen. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Should look at setting up Streamlabs and downloading it. They charge 3% compared to, yeah, well, 30% is high, but I don't know if anyone would watch me on uh, any other channel because I don't have a following anywhere else. All right. So this is going to be interesting. I'm dying to see what's going on inside. <laughs> Look at my fingers. See, that sucks. Look, it won't. Everything else is bending and working, and this stupid finger is just stuck there. Let's put those in there. What's up, the big dog? <laughs> cool name, man. I got the Savage Gear Black Four Thousand. It seems good for the price. Yeah, no. It's, yeah, like some of the Savage Gears are right. I guess it depends on how much you want to spend, doesn't it, really, on a lot of these gear. I guess Savage is at a good price point a lot of the time. All right. The three screws are out. So I'll try and hold it. This is going to be the big reveal. Ah, oh, probably should do it so my hand isn't in the way. You still have Patreon account, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do have the Patreon account. If you feel like uh, jumping over and checking it out, there should be a link up in my banner or something if you really want to check it out. All the guys that jump on Patreon, it's a huge help, hey? Like, I, uh, sorry, I know this is going to be silly, and I know you probably want to see this, but I'm going to talk about Patreon just for a sec, since as is us. Um, yeah, like, literally, Patreon this, this like, month, because it all clicked over just like the other day, it's literally paid our electricity bill, so, so... Thanks so much to all the guys that um, contribute. It's a really, really big help. And it's like, without that, like, you know, very few trips for Rod <laughs> and very few uh, busted head trips or something like that. You know, I want to get a, I want to go and do some more trips and the Patreon helps so much. So if you guys are ever keen, jump across. But uh, anything like that, awesome. Have you ever had a humpback come? How many, like so many humpback sort of sightings with on kayaks over the last couple of weeks? I've seen lots of good footage. There's a link in the description for Patreon. Yeah, there is, there is, there is. Thanks, Azza. All right, I'll stop talking and we'll just open this up so we get to the point of the video. Uh, 
All right. This is going to be interesting. And far out. There's no salt in it at all. Have a look at that. Can I, does that focus? That's crazy. Zero salt, zero anything. In fact, it looks like it's untouched. It just looks like fully greased and new. That's crazy. So that, yeah, that's three years, three years of using it on a kayak. It's been on a few trips. I took this down when I went and fished with Briggsy. I took this out on uh, the trip on the skiff recently. You will stream on YouTube with this. It's just what donations go through. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's, uh, that's the best result I could have hoped for. Man, that's out of control. Um, yeah. Wow. If only my talk looked as good. <laughs> I got a, a like a, the overhead and um, it's not a sealed reel. So hang on. It's not a sealed reel. So I don't expect this kind of result on the, the overhead like the talk. It's a talk 30. Um, but you know, I open it up and it is solid Kate salt and like worn out grease and it's just crazy. Looks like I'm not servicing for another two years. I know I probably shouldn't have opened it now because <laughs> that grease looks pretty good as well. Far out. That is actually really good. Yeah, let's spin it. Let's spin it and see if we can get action shot. So it's still pretty smooth. Like I, I haven't felt much of a change over time. So that's a pretty good endorsement for it then in that case. I was a bit worried because I thought, because obviously I am supported by Penn and I was a bit worried to do this live. I was thinking, oh God, is this going to work out? Because I might, uh, <laughs> I might, uh, kikes are real killers. Man, these things seem to be lasting. Spin fish of ease is what I had before and they lasted all right, but they did let in water over time. I think over about a year, I did have to pull them apart and service them. Do you think I should put carbon washers on reels? Uh, I wouldn't bother putting new drag on these. These come with good, uh, good drag. It's like a, it's a better, that's another reason why to go the slammers instead of the spin fishers, unless they've updated the new one, but I don't know if they have. Oh, I might just leave that off. I don't even know what to do now. I was going to do like a full like servicing video on this thing, but I don't think I'll bother <laughs> to be honest. Maybe the drag here, maybe we can, I'll pop this down and maybe we'll pull apart the drag in as well. Yeah, I'll move this down. When are you selling shirts? Well, I've got shirts. So I'm actually wearing one. Yeah, this is funny. That's the nice shirt. I don't know if you can see the logo on the back. I like my shirts simple and not too crazy. I'll do maybe a more elaborate one. I've got a few just basic logo shirts up. If you go to rocketkit.com.au, uh, there's a website if you want to purchase a shirt. The problem with the shirts is, I think I talked about this before, but I couldn't, I couldn't really outlay a lot of money to... Um, uh, buy like a whole a, a full range of shirts so i just got a you know like the direct printing kind of ones like print fill in the us so they they print it when it's ordered the problem is then though there's a delay say of about a week for people to uh, when they order for me to get the money so if i put like if i put like heaps of posts up saying buy heaps of shirts then if if like 30 people bought shirts you know dream world if let's say 30 people bought them it would drain our like family account and like my wife wouldn't be so impressed and then it'd take like a week for more money to come back from Shopify they're, they're like where it comes through so look unless you guys were willing to wait like four or five days and then once the money came through I would pay the uh, direct printing place and then that so that's an option so if you if, if too many people order maybe I'll start promoting the shirts and if lots of people order then it'll just be maybe a few more days wait what type of Inox use. I can go grab it if you want. It's just the basic, you know. Here, I'll go grab it. Happy to wait. Cool. Here, I'll be back in one sec. Alright, I'm back. Um, yeah, so originally. I used to use things like Lanox, uh, but then I found things were gumming up a little bit and it's uh, got like lanolin in it. It's got a few things that uh, I don't think uh, behave as well in the salt and the water. So then I switched, I used WD-40 to clean things down, but that's not really a lubricant, that's more of a cleaning up kind of agent. And then once they're all clean, I spray with Inox and uh, just this regular one here. And I found this to be the best. It doesn't gum up as much, seems to sound for a while, 
And then apart from proper grease, I'll use like pen grease or uh, what's the other one I've been using? Uh, Ant put me onto it, but I can't remember what it's called. It's like a drag grease, but um, it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's about all I'll use. I'll just use, say, some pen grease and then uh, inox for most of my real serving stuff. I just use a toothbrush and a light brush. I just clean all the salt off. Sometimes I've even, my, my overhead has been so dirty. Maybe I should do an overhead uh, breakdown of the talk. Or maybe the Fathom, because more people would have it. New viewer, love your channel. Thanks, man. I miss your name. But, oh, hang on, I can go back, can't I? I'm getting better. I'm, when I'm not on the water, my hands aren't wet. Uh, Andrew, hang on, man. Is that the MX3? Your camera is backwards. Yeah, I know. I No, it's just an iPhone. But for some reason, it switches it. When I when I flip, I'm using the front-facing camera so I can read the chat. See you, mate. See you, small amounts. I know. Not quite, uh, not quite as good as a fishing one, maybe. <laughs> you try beach fishing. I'd, uh, I'd do it, but um, a lot of the time, uh, you know, if I get the choice between beach fishing and then kayak, I tend to go the kayak. So yeah. All right. Maybe we should. Maybe we could spray. I'll spray these with a little inox, and maybe we'll try and get this off. I don't want too much inox in near the near the drag though. Couldn't read the can as the text was backwards. Well, I'll hold it nice and still and you'll have to, uh, you'll recognize it as soon as you see it in the stores. There you go. <laughs> Fishing in Bermuda, man, that would be a dream, wouldn't it? I'd love to come over. There's so many places I'd like to go. Ooh, see these screws are a bit tighter. Maybe I'll, here we go. To use my bung hand. <laughs> Maybe I'll let that soak for a second. You know, it's great to stop rust when you leave rifles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty handy stuff, isn't it? Like, inox seems to be my um, spray of choice for just about everything these days. <laughs> Sometimes even, even anything, bike chains, cleaning stuff. Used a bit of WD-40 to clean stuff as well. I'm just letting this soak in a bit and I'll try and pull the, uh, a bit of the drag out as well. <laughs> Oi, Oli Moran, at Oli Moran, or is that Oi Moron? You call me Moron. <laughs> Mate, good stuff. I had a cheapie I pulled apart because it was seized after three months of kayak fishing. Yeah, man. Kayak, I've, I used to go, and when I first started, I used to go and buy um, uh, just any cheap reel that I could get, like at Kmart, and when they done, had a sale on, like those Jarvis Walker specials. And I'd have, um, I'd just buy, like, 10 of them, you know what I mean? And use them for the whole season. But I swear they lasted, some of them, if you use them every, like if you use them maybe twice a week, they'd last, which I did. And then I'd literally just drill a hole in the bottom of the body and just like spray inox in and wind it and get them cranking again. But then uh, eventually I'd, uh... oh cool, thanks Hazza. Yeah, no, no sweat. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I'd, I'd keep them going like that. But as soon as you stop using them, oh, I reckon in two weeks, if you didn't use a reel for two weeks, it was dead. It would like seize up and then you'd crank and it'd strip stuff inside and then it'd be all over. So then I'd just throw that in the bin and then move on to the next one and I'd probably go through maybe six or so a season. But uh, that went on until I sort of saw the Jig Masters. I think this is all in my last year's Rod and Reel Arsenal video. I think I talked about the same thing. Found the Jig Masters, was using them more heavily and ditched the spin reels all together for a while. And then moved over to the uh, uh, the Spinfisher V's, once I saw a guy putting it through uh, its paces. I can't even undo these. I'm gonna have to like... So that's one thing, the salt has uh, definitely got into the screws on the top to dr dry the spool. Let's try and do it this way. That's working. So I'm using the pliers to, <laughs> to get it cut. Here we go. Just this one, it won't go. Here we go. All right. See what happens under here. We got people watch. Hey guys, if you're watching, make sure you hit that like button. <laughs> Apparently, that's what you got to do. Hey buddy, been following you for quite a bit. 
You're absolutely great at what you do. Do you have... Uh, you've come a long way. Thanks, man. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, slowly getting there, I guess. It's a, a slow process, YouTube. I think I... I started... Uh, a lo like a, a long time ago, just mucking around though, I wasn't really taking it seriously and then about two years ago I took it seriously and went right I'm going to start doing the vlogs and I think I've sort of progressed since then quite a bit. It's all about making that leap to talk to camera I think. Returning to NZ soon, uh, I'd like to but um, you know maybe at the end of the year, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, okay so we're taking that off now. That's the outer ring, all this, okay so there's another seal in here. Yeah, right, so there's a thin seal that goes over the top there. Sorry, I've not pulled one of these apart before. I don't really know what I'm doing. Probably, ah, oh, okay, so there's the top of the drag. There's very little to no sort of corrosion of salt in the top, but what I really need to do is open the bottom, obviously. I don't know if I was that keen to do a whole full real pull apart in this one. <laughs> Why don't you dye your sideburns black? Because then I'd be a guy that dyes his sideburns black. I don't know. I'm just rolling with it. I'm uh oh speaking. I'm just rolling with the hair. It's gonna happen, man. I I can't avoid it. My both my um my my parents or my no oh, I probably shouldn't say this, but my mother and and they've they've got grey hair. Okay, so they've been dying it, and obviously they're ladies, so they dye it. But um yeah, I'm just I'm just rolling with it. I'm gonna turn into a silverback gracefully and. If it looks ridiculous, maybe I'll just shave my head or something. I don't know. So I'm enjoying these long, these long locks. Here's uh, some testers of the shirt, actually. I was hand screen printing them. I was going to do hand screen print them, but then I found that I'd say one in maybe eight I'd stuff up. Yeah, embracing the salt and pepper big time. There's no, well, what else am I going to do, you know, unless I start doing using Jess for men. Anyway, I started screen printing shirts, but then every now and then I'd get this issue, and then, um, and then it'd mean if I stuffed up, say, one in eight, it means I've made no money on them anyway. So yeah, the Silver Fox. I know, I often, I'm thinking, I wonder how long I've got. A couple of years maybe before it really starts to go grey. <laughs> so yeah, if you've just tuned in, I'll hold this up again. Use salt away to keep your rods and reels last. Yeah, no, I know. Well, apparently I won't need to because that's the inside there. That's, that's mental. That's mental. I expected way, I expected at least a little bit of salt and corrosion and then I'd, I was looking... I was expecting to have to make excuses <laughs> um, and just say, oh, you know, but it's still smooth, it's crazy, it's got this much salt in it. But now I don't have to say anything. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, has anyone got any questions? Otherwise, I guess I should probably wrap it up. <laughs> do you wash your boat motor? Uh, what do I use to wash my boat motor? Oh, here, I'll go back. Lord of the silver bag. Use it to wash your boat motor. Use what to wash my boat motor? Oh, you'll have to elaborate. Sorry, man. Get Shimano. Yeah, you've been down that track. Look, I'm not. I'm not one of those, you know, fanboys that you know isn't uh, use salt away. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's good advice. I probably should. What's the name? Jamie uh, was telling me to do that as well. Um, I'm not one of those fanboys. It's just like, oh, all other reels are crappy. Like I, I you know, lots of good products out there, and there's lots of good. Uh, brands that do a good job. I used to use Shimano reels, uh, not so much on the kayak, but I've switched to pen because they're, they're made way better for me on the kayak, much better. At the price point, I can get like a proper sealed reel. Um, and this is, well, this is the perfect sort of price point slash decent reel, decent drag. Um, last super long. Yeah, well, I hadn't found that. There is one Shimano that I'd probably look at, but it starts to get a bit more X-y. So I'm sort of happy with the pens at the moment. Oh, Super Chat, thanks. Uh, Duran, is it Duran? I'm so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. But thank you so much, Super Chat. That's a real big help, man. But yeah, I don't know, like, you know, there's lots of other brands. Like, a lot of the big brands have a decent sort of sealed reel on offer. Um, a lot of the time they're getting a bit more expensive than I want to pay. The Slammer sort of comes in at a decent price point and you can pick them up pretty reasonably, pretty at a pretty reasonable price. I'm gonna go clean my reels. <laughs> Yeah, good, good, good. Any thoughts on a di Daiwa? Um, I don't, you know, look, since I've moved to the pen, I'm quite a few years out of being uh, in touch with the other brands, to be honest, at the moment. Got a couple, but I'm just going to sit up here again because my knees are starting to hurt. I want to get a nice sticker for the kayak. Yeah, okay, I can look at getting some stickers. Do a squid vid. 
I don't ever fish for squid up here as much anymore. I've got to, like, down in Sydney. Oh, speaking of Sydney, I don't know if anyone else is down in Sydney is watching this or where you guys are from, but like that stop the lockout thing, man, or just that, all the lockouts that are coming in, it's just crazy. I, I don't know how to approach, um, yeah, I'll def I'll look into stickers, I'll look into the stickers. So I don't know how to approach uh, helping the guys out down there, but there's been, there's been like a new sort of marine park that they're trying to bring in down there that seems crazy, like it, it's gonna basically lock out, like all the places I learned to fish and grew up fishing with my old man and, and I spend time with the kids down there, like Camp Cove, Nelson's, Nelson's Park, Bottle and Glass around that area. That's the first place I ever went to be fishing. Uh, it's pretty crazy that they're locking out so many uh, fishing spots down in Sydney at the moment, and hopefully, hopefully the guys get up. I know there's a big Facebook movement, and uh, I've been thinking about how to best sort of help out. I guess just saying things on social media would be a help, but it just doesn't seem to be effective. In fact, nothing seems to be effective to get through to the politicians. The only way that you could make a, a difference by the seems of things is to vote, to vote them out or something, but. That seems to take too time. By that time, it looks like almost the bill might get passed and it's gonna, they're already going to be locked out, so it's pretty crazy. Rodney, are you half Asian? Yes, I am. My mother is Chinese. The, my, both my parents are Australian-born, but my father's Italian uh, and my mother's Chinese, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> uh, would, love to see, would love to see a kayak clean-up video and show how you wash it after a day. You know why I, I never, I always say I'll do that, but you know why I never really, but in home from Malaysia, you know why I don't do it, that, uh, like that video, is because I literally, I get out of the water, I bring it up to um, where we launch from, and usually where we launch is a tap. I like get a hose out and I hose it all with just water, and that's it. Like I don't, I don't do anything fancy, I don't wipe up or spray anything special on it. I literally just hose everything with water, um, inside and out. I don't even do it nicely. Like I get my reels and spray them, you know, hardcore, and then that's all I do, and then I pack everything up. Nah, you're an Aussie, mate. Yeah, yeah. Both my parents. My well, my mum, my mum's parents grew up in Bondi. Well, my mum grew up in Bondi, so it's pretty Australian. And then they, and they, they like the the Asians that owned the local fruit shop. Like they owned the local fruit shop just off Gould Street in uh, Bondi, so that's where my, my, my family's heritage are. And they came over for like from Gold Rush times, like, so, so they've been here a long time, more than most Australians on the Chinese side of things. And my dad's been here forever as well, so yeah, it's kind of... Hey from Mexico, how you going, man? <laughs> they won't lock us out. Yeah, I know, uh, Dio, we'll see how that all works out. I'm thinking of coming down to Sydney and even do a, um, a video down there. And just, I don't know, the only way I can think I can really contribute and make a difference is maybe do a video showing that not all fish are, are, are idiots, you know what I mean? Like, we go down, we enjoy the place. I'm going to teach my kids. Um, smash the likes, yeah, smash the likes, guys. Yeah, teach my kids why it's so great to be there, why, you know, and my kids inevitably end up more in tune with nature, more uh, in tune with what's going on in the water, and they know more about the life down there, and uh, it seems crazy to lock, you know, everyone out and put them in this bracket of, you know, like some kind of like environmental disaster, when the real reality is we're all like, if anything, we're the custodians. And we're, I'm, I'm more of a conservationist than I think most. But the problem with these lockouts is it's in the marine park is it's so easy. If, you, if you're not a fisherman and they're going to lock you out, if someone walks up to you in the street and goes, hey, do you like, uh, do you want to protect marine life? Of course you're going to say yes. And then so... If you walk up to just any stranger that's not a fisherman and says, and they and you say, hey, do you want to, uh, would you approve, say, a marine park that protect all the fish in Sydney Harbour? Of course they're going to say yes, you know what I mean? So they get, it's, they get like the free run of, like, it's so easy for them to get people on their side. And then, but if you're a fisherman, you know the reality. You know you're down there and you see, like, all the other people don't really care about the area. And they'll gladly, you know, uh, flush things down the, you know, down the drain and, and ruin the whole, uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, I, I don't want to get too into it here because I really haven't thought too much about how I want to really present it. But if you're down in Sydney or if you're in any way in Australia and you want to sign up to Stop the Lockout, go to stoplockout.com.au, check it out, uh, and they'll get you onto, say, petitions and think ways you can contribute in helping stop the marine park or at least... And then there's a big march on the 27th down in Sydney and down at Hyde Park, the 27th. So if you're down in Sydney and you're a fisher, you really need to get to that march and uh, try and make a... The politicians understand that they can't just lock all the fishermen in Sydney out of their favourite spots. 
it's at least 25 spots, and the 25 spots just happen to be some great spots that I grew up fishing. It's crazy. Uh, no matter of size. What's that, Heath? Sorry, I missed the first part of your comment there. But, uh, yeah. So, anyway, stuff the lockout. That's an interesting thing that's going on in Sydney. I'd like to be contributed more, but hopefully everyone sort of can make a difference and stop it from happening. Because even release, the fish seem to die. Well... I don't know about that. I'd like to see the proper science on, on both sides of that. Because I know I release fish and some of them swim away very strongly. I don't think they're going to die. I also keep fish to eat, you know. Fishing the beauty. Thanks, man. Super chat. Wow, that's awesome. Love the lives. <laughs> Cheers. I know, sorry. We originally was all about the reel, but now we're just, um, we're just talking. It's going to kill the little fishing in tackle stores. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, won't it? Um, yeah, I don't really know how to, it seems like one of those things, it's just so hard to, um, up north they, they're they stopping undersized limits, yeah, I'll go back and get, try and read that, it's just a limit of fish because of barotrauma, yeah, I, I've got to admit, bringing them up from deep doesn't seem ideal, but, uh, you know, if you're fishing that kind of fishing, you hopefully you're fishing to take something home and eat it. I guess there's, you know, there's lots of different sides of that story and you'd have to look at, you know, and I'm not a marine biologist or a scientist that studied it, so I don't want to talk too much about it and put myself in the, uh, in the uh, mud. <laughs> Come to Malaysia and fish. Man, I'd love to go so many places. I miss the real talk. Hey, go, man. Yeah, well, the real talk, basically the end result is, I'm sure maybe if you go back and watch it, but the end result was I don't need to service it for another three years by the looks of things. <laughs> it's still smooth and has no salt in it. Yep, love to eat fish, man. Yep, me too. But I guess there's a limit. You know, you take what you need and don't take any more. Would you do some GT vids with the photo? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it would I think it would handle a GT. I'd have to up the, the braid I've got on it. I think it would handle it. You know, I've caught, I've only caught maybe, I don't know, like eight GTs. So I'm not the most experienced at it, especially from the rocks or and things like that. But uh, I've caught a few of the kayaks and that. I think this reel would handle it, no problems. But, uh, you know, any reel with decent drag is going to handle it. Uh, sup, brother? Hey, D M D Dioncio. I'm sorry, I probably said that so wrong. Sup, brother? Love your vids. <laughs> Come to Timor. Man, so many good places to go fishing. Do you fish for Aussie bass? I have done a few fishing videos for bass and no one seems to want to watch my freshwater videos. So I'll do I'll do more and I'll keep putting them in here and there, but I won't focus on it because I just can't seem to get any traction. I do enjoy it though. I enjoy fishing, like all, any fresh, like any fishing. I like fishing. So it's just, yeah, it just um, seems to not be what the channel is really after, but I'll definitely keep sipping me in because I, wa I want to, put up, you know, a nice varied thing. And I guess if you build the channel, you know, people will come from other, you know, other areas like, like bass fishing and they'll come along. I thought it's night time in Australia. No, not yet. What's the time? Probably about one o'clock or something. Trying to shout your beer, right? Is there anything in trouble with the super chat? Uh, I think super chat's working. I've had two come through full on fishing. Thanks heaps for trying though. If you can't get it going on, it's all good, man. But, uh, cheers, thanks, East. Yeah, I don't know. Give it another crack. Apparently, I've never... I actually don't even know how to do Super Chat. I think there's a little money icon next to the... Uh, next to... On the channel. On the mix of you. I don't know. Someone else will have to help me out, mate. Not very good at that. Tried twice. Dad, spews. Oh, that's all right, man. Thank you for trying. That's all cool. <laughs> Let me take in fishing offshore. Tweed heads. Man, I might have to take you up on the offer at some point. Send me a PM, you never know, like if I, if I can work it in, like obviously um, Hitchinbrook, that'd be cool. Obviously it's just a time thing. I get, you know, offers for people to take me out, but a lot of the time I, I struggle to just, you know, find the time to do that kind of thing. All right, how long have we been on for? 39, far out, that's long. That's crazy. All right, I might, I'll wrap it up now because, um, yeah, I think the reels, we've opened it up. What a 5,500 from watching your channel. Went to Fiji and smashed a few GTs. Nice, 50 pound braid, yeah, cool. Cause I know even like, I saw it, I think cavi has gone bigger now, but even he was using like, a, I think a, a 6,500 reel or something, maybe even 5,000. I think they do all right. As long as you can get a D amount of drag pressure on certain reels, it's fine. 
But then again, you know, sometimes if you're being really rough and nasty to him, I guess you just want to crank it up. Rod is a great name for a fisher. Yeah, Rod. Yeah, I've never really been overly excited about my name until I, yeah, realised it had had Rod in it. <laughs> it's all right. Could be worse. Could be worse names out there. Do a meet and greet. Yeah, right. Does anyone really want to come and meet me? I don't know. <laughs> a bit of... Cheers, man. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Aussie legend brother, you should link up, uh, link up around Jacob's Well. Yeah, Jacob's Well looks nice. I went, I've only been there once. Went up uh, and did a kayak test paddle. Looks like a nice area. Your favourite creeks, Tullibud? Yeah, well, I'm pretty close to Tully. I'm just a few blocks away. Heaps of bug whiting. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I've got to take the kids down. I'm going to have to use bait, though, which I better... I have to get them onto a few fish and keep taking the kids down and catching nothing because I'm making them use lures. <laughs> oh, full on fishing, man. Oh, hey, it did work. Full on fishing, man. Thank you so much for persisting. <laughs> Sick. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll, yeah, like it's Friday today. I'm definitely due for a beer. And um, I have Fridays off, but it's usually consumed with just housework and chores and getting in trouble from the wife not doing housework and chores. So road trip to Whit Sundays, man. It's going to happen. I'm definitely going to do another trip with Tim up and up north at some point soon-ish. i just got to sort of work out a timeline. Hopefully we have better luck. We, just, we really blanked out on that last trip. We got unlucky. Everyone that's talked to me that's fished that area said, you just got unlucky. We just, you know, tough. Fishing's tough sometimes, isn't it? Especially when you're trying to make a video of it. But, you know, whatever. Still got a nice video. It was such a nice time. We had a great time there, but it was, uh, it was tough. Hello from TN. Where's TN? Realistic fishing. Is that like Texas? I said, where's TN? Sorry, man. Elaborate. Help me. <laughs> Keep it realistic. <laughs> Check your email now, but I'll have a look. I'll have a look, man. Thanks for the offer. And, and if it doesn't work out, thanks for the offer anyway. But I'll definitely have a look, and you never know, man. And maybe we can go out and if you could put me on some dollies, I'd take it. Tennessee. Yeah, nice. Is this realistic fishing that does like a lot of uh, like the... Yeah, like, I, I, I totally know who you are. Yeah, yeah, you've got a YouTube channel, yeah? I know Realistic Fishing. You're smashing it, in fact, yeah. You got that, that big American market, man. You're doing well, if it is you. <laughs> TN, Tennessee, thanks, man. Just bought the offshore yak. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, offshore yakking is definitely something cool. Three lock-up proposal. We're expecting three sites near me. Yeah, I saw, like, Long Reef is definitely a big deal. Like, I grew up in Coogee, which is one of the places they're pretty much going to lock out. And I used to fish and, and muck around as a kid a lot in, um, uh, yeah, around, like, in the harbour, along that strip out to Camp Cove, which is another one they're locking out. So, yeah, it's it's mental. Hopefully they don't get it through, hey. But, uh, yeah, 42 minutes of me just crapping on. So, yeah, here's the wrap-up. Real looks good. Stevie's great, I'd agree. What's your email? If you just go to rocketkit.com.au, my email is also rodney at rocketkit or liftoff at rocketkit's another one you can send it through to. Just, um, there'll be links, like if you go to the about page of my channel, you'll be able to figure that out. But um, yeah, time to wrap it up, I think. So if the weather comes down, I will go for a trip tomorrow or the next day. It will be a skiff trip because obviously my finger's buggered. So uh, I don't really want to paddle too hard on the palm because I don't know if you can see it, but look, see that, see that, how that's sticking out? That's the tendon that snapped. So that's no good. And so when I put pressure on it, it actually hurts quite a lot. So not much paddling for the next couple of weeks, I don't think. Apparently it's meant to settle down. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. And hopefully you got to see inside the reel. And uh, I'll wrap it up. But yeah, cheers, heaps. And thanks for uh, all the support on the channel and everything like that. And uh, hopefully, oh, I've got another video coming out tomorrow. Oh, smash the like button, guys, if you haven't done it already. <laughs> but I've got another video coming out tomorrow. It's not a fishing trip, but it's, it's a, a DIY. It's how to... Fix your kayak or your boat if you've uh, ripped the fiberglass or you've smashed a hole in your fiberglass. So check it out if you're interested in uh, a bit of DIY and how to fix it, uh, do a bit of fiberglassing. So yeah, anyway, cheers. Thanks, guys. Signing out. Where's the button? Cool. Thanks, guys.